So in this video, we're skating Stoner Skate Park. I think it has stood the test of time. It is a, I mean, it's not the oldest skate park in the world, but it's been around for a minute. The designs are good. It has one quarter pipe that has an opening, but just about everything it has like a unique like twist to it. Uh, the most classic thing that they have there is like the kicker to kicker. And then other than that, it has like that main stage in the middle. That's like a tall ledge. It's got a bunch of like different, like it's all concrete ledges. There's barely any coping in the entire skate park. I think there's only like three or four pieces of coping. The rest is just like granite, a uh, really cool skate park. Uh, so we're going to skate that. And then I'm going to talk throughout the video a bit about what's going wrong with skate park. So here's the video. Hey, I'm at Stoner on a weekend. Don't believe me. Look at the 6 billion people. Uh... <laughs> I think we're waiting to go skate to school. I think they're gonna get kicked out again. Trey, you, try. I'll do it on this. No, you won't. Do it on flat. I believe the quarter pipe action. Oh! What? Dude, Dan could never, dude. I was literally gonna say you could never. Okay. We were not skating in the streets. We were in the park and was like, I'm there! Pretty excited to welcome our newest team rider, PD Lad. <laughs> I wish. I just put him on. That, he was my first checkout. Really? Yeah. The Strength Magazine. Which, first guy you've ever checked out. <laughs> first checkout is Strength Magazine. Nobody knows what Strength Magazine is anymore. I, I do. I remember seeing the ads in 411. It was online, too. That was first try. That was first try. That was my first try. You know, everyone's getting this bump over thing. I should probably get an angle where I can film the bump over thing. I slept wrong the other day, so I literally can't skate. My neck's thrown out. Um, yeah, I get hurt sleeping. It's pretty sick. This used to happen to me a lot, uh, and it hasn't happened in like six months. First time, so get, having a nice six month like run of sleeping correctly and not uh, being hurt because I slept wrong, pretty nice. Damn, you almost got people that's back. That's Orlando. It's good. That was awesome. Where are you going with that? Oh, that's where. Are you good? I hope. It looked like it hurt. Funny, because as I was going up, I was like, oh, I'm going to dump it. <laughs> You're like, this is a bad idea. dumped it. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, so Lando used to get stuck from Powell. I don't know if he's going to come back or not, but he did do that back heel, and John didn't. So I guess he's better than John. Can't beat him, don't need him. Damn. Dude, John is not good at skating. Confirmed. Another back heel. Another missed back heel. Oh! What? Where you been all my life? I was, I was sleeping. I like slept wrong two nights ago on my next all jack, so I debated about not coming out. Did you? Same lady? No, it was a dude this time. Did you get the chance to skate it at all? No, I like. I was on top of the fence again. Yeah, oh, really? And the dude was like, oh, nope, guys, nope. And then he opened up the gate for us and let us out. Uh, well, that's the best way to get kicked out when they like open the gate for you. Oh, I like going over that thing to hit the thing. Oh, they're going over here. John, Orlando's just eating you alive I know. today. I was not prepared for that. Um, Look, I stole this trick from Chris Dawson. You can put this on YouTube, I guess. <laughs> I'll share the secret with you guys. If you're ever planning on hucking down anything big, wear two pairs of pants it's really hot and kind of uncomfortable but i'm telling you it'll save your body is that so it's like you should get those um hip pads that, that company old bones does exactly that's like pretty much what this is essentially Do you so now when i eat shit like my my hips won't get messed up have you ever heard the josh casper wallenberg story no so when josh casper went and they had the big uh, buster bale contest he wanted to three six foot wallenberg uh, when Chris Cole was still also battling it. And evidently he showed up under his clothing with a full bodysuit. Yeah. So like chest pads, hip pads, knee pads. Ooh. Oh, tail smash flat ground. I approve. Because I feel like that would be uncomfortable. Yeah, I feel like it would be a little restraining. 
Yeah, I, I could definitely see that. Like, I still got all the movement, you know? Yeah, you look, but you look cozy. Like, but you're also dripping sweat as you're moving your legs. You're like, I got hey. all the movement. You can, you, if you showed up in full pads, like, I mean, like, helmet and everything to try the trick you're trying today. Wow. I would, uh, approve. Because I'm talking about my star player. You. How? Oh, don't really yeah. Where is he going? Oh, he's going up here. That thing's big. So good. That was first try. PJ Lads interview. Welcome to the team. Now all we need is Ryan Gallant, Jeremy Rogers, and Southie, and we collected them all. Oh, Colin Fisk, too. Do we want Southie? I want Southie. Big, big spin forward slide? Uh, go to regular. Fakey. You got shove out? You gotta work on them. Up the Euro. Oh yeah, that's that's Euro speed. Ooh. Yeah, this cap is awful. It's kind of your lady. Yeah. You can dance with it though. Cap Smith and me or Polly, it's chill. Oh my god. That hub was beefy. I remember seeing footage of this place like back in the day. Thinking like, oh man, I want to go to that skate park so bad and just destroy that hubba. Just thinking like, oh, like it looks like it's yeah. gonna grind cash. <laughs> exactly. I back to well, like I'm back tail guy, so you know I just figured I'd do all the back tail you would never back tail that. I could definitely back tail this. Alright, if I land this right here, you gotta back tail it. I'm hurt right now. Nope. I have a rolled neck. What is it that you gotta do? Roll you're probably like, neck. get my neck rolled. What kind of excuse is that? A valid one. You roll your neck and try to backtail that. My dog ate my homework. <laughs> my dog ate my, my backtails. No, I'd backtail it, but it goes to another school. Looks like I don't got a backtail. You're gonna front 180 out, weren't you? Heck yeah. You're trying to dance with all my ladies. I was actually trying Hurricane that time. That is my lady. No. Yeah, I'm a Hurricane guy. Listen, I have a couple tricks. I got half cap Smith, backside tail slide, backside tail slide. I like how you're just talking. <laughs> like, where's the tricks? I'm hurt. I'm literally <laughs> injured. My neck, it's, it's shattered. Can we just name off all the tricks I could do? I dislocated my neck. Yeah, you're right. Those are tricks that I could do. Back tail and hubba. That was literally a front shot revert. no secret that I love a good classic one of everything skate park. If there's a solid flat bar and a solid ledge with some good flat ground, um, I love a lot of the stuff that Svon Ranch does. I like a lot of the dimensions of their ramps. And I like a lot of the new modern skate parks that have been coming out where it's, I don't want to say street leaguey, but like toned down street league, street little league, if you will. It's more like accessible kind of learning stuff uh, that's sort of street league-esque. And I come from a generation um, where the early, really early 2000s, late 90s skate parks were just like these hunks of concrete with random shapes that they just slapped coping on everything. And especially on the skate parks on the East Coast and in the Midwest, the weather has tore these skate parks to shreds and they're really falling apart. You got plants growing out of them. I mean, even my home park, which isn't that old, I think that park might be like ah, 14 years old, is already getting like pretty rickety and a lot of the coping is starting to like wear holes and it's, you know, it's getting pretty nasty. And simultaneously that these old skate parks, these weird lump of concretes are dying 
spreading out a little bit, and some of them are actually being replaced. Some of them also are standing in a place to where the city doesn't want to build like a more modern, better skate park, because they're like, you already have a skate park. But regardless, when these towns are now getting these skate parks, they're just getting like the redesign of the same exact skate park that every other town has to where like within an hour drive of my house, there is probably, I want to say like 45, maybe more skate parks, like an insane amount of skate parks. And if 45 doesn't sound that crazy, really picture 45 different things. It's a lot of things. But if you took all the modern recent skate parks that have been built, like let's say there's probably been... 20 15 skate parks built in the past like three years those skate parks if you like added up all the obstacles the variance is very slight to where like you kind of have the same six skate parks just in different layouts and i'm not complaining about having skate parks and by all means i grew up without a skate park i get comments all the time like oh you're making fun of the skate park and pointing at this and pointing at that and it's like I am fully aware of how spoiled I am out here. The skate, like, if you know what Lansdowne is in Maryland, where it's just like waves of concrete and stuff like that, there's no ramps. There's, I mean, now there's a curb there and they have like little rails and stuff, but they didn't even have that when I grew up. It was literally just slabs of banks that were like spray painted to crap so they're super slippery, nothing to grind, just stuff to ride over. And you could kind of skate some of the like humps and stuff like hips, but uh, you know, it was pretty ridiculous and obviously holes and cracks and it's rough, blah, blah, blah. But anyways, what I'm saying is when you get a new skate park, you like have like an idea of what you want to be there. And it's more often than not that obvious mistakes are made. But anyways, the, the issue that I'm having with the current modern skate parks, because I think skateboarding's dying out and we're going to start really slowing down on how many skate parks we're getting. <whistles> Orlando's so good. Yeah. Like, not even trying either. Like, despite the fact that he's not me, he's, like, kind of killing it, you know? You, you, you wish you, you, you. You, if you, when you, if you, when you wish, when you, you, you. <laughs> you wish you. I will say this is one of the most handrail -y skate park rails uh, in L.A. It's, like, actual handrail high pretty much. Let me double check that, actually. Can you sack? Yeah, that's, like, a handrail the whole way down. A really good handrail, but that's like a street rail. You can sack it the whole way down. Sack here, you can sack here, you can sack here. Do every try. Whoa. Back to back? Nope. This? And Devin was like, nah, pop it like this. Yeah, put, put more the towards the tip. Center. Dude, you should try a 360 flip on Andy's new board. It's literally built for 360 flips. You can actually pop my table. Doubt it. I hated that. That was sick. That was actually a really good table flip. <laughs> Thanks, Dev. Thanks, Dev. That's crazy, because he's not even good at 360 flips. He didn't even do it over the picnic table. How many stairs did he do it up? Six? That's not even seven. Oh. Front crook first go, aka the Brian or net grind. The race. Who's gonna win? Who's gonna win? Winner. Yeah. Dude, he has a very wide bag of tricks. Like, I don't know. Wait, does he? Yeah, no, he does actually. I put him in skate. He does skate switch and ollie too. Mmm. Mmm. Laying hands on that board. Ah! Ah! You put the hand on the knee. You know when you're under the age of 20 and you put your hand on your knee, you're gassed, you're tired. Intermission impossible? Nope. Five. Oh, oh. 
If he beats you with a harder trick. <laughs> Dude, sick, bro. Ooh, are we need a little tail slide? Oh, I love it when you obey. Cody is a power top. Damn, Landy. Casper. Casper? Oh, on the QP? The old Cody Hile kickflip. Kid is so good. Dude, he's so much better than you. I didn't see him do it back to the other It's button. funny, like every time I'll comment on his video, like learn kickflip back nose blunt, learn kickflip back tail big spin. He'll like- Go learn it. Within a week, he'll have it already posted in an edit with like 20 other new tricks. Already uh, tested the theory. Like I was commenting kickflip back nose blunt and like- And then he went and figured it out. I'm gonna it. comment, I'm like, hey, do my taxes. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Wow. Oh, that was not a full cab. I missed it. He has this Tim O'Connor one foot where he kicks it off like this way. But, like Tim O'Connor kicks like basically behind himself. Like you, you get the point. Similar direction. It's like an ollie east. Ooh. Yeah, it'd be a ollie east. Wait, where's the sun? Ollie Clint Eastwood. No, nope, technically it's an ollie north. Consistency, man. You are? Yeah. Really? Because that backside flip kind of sealed the deal. Dude, yeah, he's going to land it right here. And then he tries to end with a pressure? For all you know, he flipped it with his feet. You can say your uh, social security number. I won't tell anyone. Did you just say PJ Ladd's favorite skater was Danny Waite? Like, why would, what? Because he pays his bill. I'm like, people are like, who's your favorite skater? And I'm like, uh, George Powell. <laughs> I missed the trick, so Deville's gonna let me film his viewfinder. Wait, you're serious? <laughs> nah, nah, you can keep that. That's a that could be a Pal Peralta exclusive. No, no, I, I want you to film it. Okay. Just say it's Rodney. No, there's no way it's Rodney Mullen. We're trying to guess Speedy Lad's favorite skater because Deville just. Is this a, did I just get Rick Rawls? Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, switch O. Brandon Westgate. How do you not know that? Is it Brandon Westgate? Yeah. It was day one, but he tried to steal John Bradford. Says so day one became number two, and Brandon Westgate became number one. Brandon Westgate's a good one. You got my favorite trick. Though. I've been waiting for that half cap deal all day. Hey, do you want to film my uh, phone so you have the clip in your video too? Because I got it. <laughs> you can film it. <laughs> I ain't greedy. I'll give it to the needy.
Kyle's doing a full length. I think that the video should be cut. We should call it really year right. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, wrong. Extremely Baker 3. Yeah. Call it Baker 7. Well, we don't even know what it is because yeah. we, we don't know how much footage we're, we're going to We're doing it. a thrasher edit. we got a year deadline. Oh, oh you okay? He's okay. Wow. That was a funny looking front heel. You can hear his ring smack on the nose. Mm. He just did that first try and asked me to do it again because I'm a bad person if I missed it. Land it! <laughs> ah! He did it! So I just think there's gonna be less skate parks built, but skate park builders have been getting, been getting way less creative because it's like, okay, here's a formula that works. Like we know a good pyramid, a good bump to rail, a good bump to ledge and A-frame, you know, we're, we're gonna really rush to get all these things in. And, and absolutely, these massive skate parks, like the Teen Pain Parks and stuff like that, there's always like really cool and creative stuff that's going into these parks. But with the smaller, more modern skate park, cause that's what's common now. They like, basically it's like a tennis court size miniature skate park and they just do one of everything now i will say if i had to choose and design a skate park that's gonna be right by my house it would be a pretty cookie cutter like one of everything definitely a steep quarter pipe maybe two or three funky things but outside of that i feel like you can get pretty funky you don't need to just mess with the uh size and shape of some of the obstacles and that's really what we've been seeing a lot of it's like okay here's a handrail but now here's a handrail that instead of being like a seven stair handrail it's a nine stair handrail and it doesn't really add anything to it. Like it's a little bit more scary, but the same mindset that you need for the seven, seven rail is the same skill and mindset that you need for the nine stair rail. The skate park doesn't need 30 hips that are just like different sizes. And I feel like no one's really trying to find new obstacle designs, which they're definitely out there. I've seen skate parks accidentally build really cool obstacles where like the concrete will like lob over into one other thing. And it's like, oh, this is like a hip into like a dugout. So you can like pump around like, Imagine, I've skated something like this. It was when I was driving cross country. It was like a bank, a sideways. So if this is the bank, it had a cutout that went in it. So when you carved on the bank, you could pump into the wall of the bubble and then like float out. So like you could technically, I mean, we didn't skate it very much because it rained, but like you could like do a trick in and carve and come out. Super fun. There's so many simple designs that I feel like need to be played with. A pyramid that I think has a U in the middle would be super fun because then you could do like manuals where it swoops in and like the corners of the uh, pyramid could have like maybe like a little piece of double-sided coping. So if you really wanted to, you could like grind the edges of it, but it have it be mellow enough to where it's not so crazy to pump into. Like, I don't know, I like to see more funky stuff. One of the cool things about Woodward is they have so many massive skate parks that you really see them mess around and tinker with ideas. So when the skate park council comes to your city, please don't be afraid to be like, hey, sure, let's get the basics, but every skate park needs something very unique unique. There can be only so many bump over big concrete balls. Every skate park does not need that obstacle. If you want to bump over something, just drag a trash can out of the nearest park like the rest of us always did at our local park. So you don't need something permanently there. It was cool the first couple times that I saw it, but now I'm just like, God damn it. And another random thing that kind of bothers me is the back of every hubba and ledge doesn't need to be like, like wally accessible. Just make it vertical. Because when you grind this way on a bump to ledge and it has a wally thing to land in that's kind of spooky, just make it vertical. You can wally stuff that's vertical. The slanted stuff doesn't really help them much. In fact, it makes it more awkward if you ask me. Okay, that's my skate park rant.